Hello, my name is Jared Niemi, and this is a mini lecture on Introduction to Bayesian Statistics. The primary purpose of this mini lecture is to discuss the common statistical questions of interest and how a Bayesian would approach them. If at this point you are unfamiliar with Bayes' rule, I suggest you see either my previous lecture on the topic or review some other resource about Bayes' rule. To quickly recall what Bayes' rule is, Bayes' rule states that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of B given A times the probability of A divided by the probability of B. Now, the primary purpose of today's mini lecture is to talk about Bayesian statistics, and I'm going to define Bayesian statistics as a branch of statistics that applies Bayes' rule to solve inferential questions of interest, where A represents unknowns and B represents the data. All right, and we're going to talk in a bit about what kinds of infer inferential questions of interest there are, but first I'm going to discuss some notation that I'll be using throughout today's mini-lecture as well as in the mini-lectures to follow. Theta is going to represent our model parameters. Y is going to represent data, Y tilde represents future data, and M sub K is going to represent a specific model. Some notes here in order is that Y can be continuous or discrete. Theta it can be a scalar or it can be a vector. And we'll often be talking about uh, density or mass functions. And so I just wanted to review some, the marginal, conditional, and joint probability density and mass functions. So here, a lowercase p in, of this argument u represents the marginal probability density function for u. p u given v represents the conditional probability density function for u given v. And P u comma v represents the joint probability density function for u and v. Now I should note that here I'm referring to the probability density function, but this could also refer to a probability mass function if u and or u and v are discrete. But I will always use, I will try to always use the terminology density regardless of whether the random variable itself is continuous or discrete. All right, so the three main areas of inference that we're going to talk about today are parameter estimation, prediction, and hypothesis testing. So parameter estimation is typically the goal of parameter estimation is to either provide a point or an interval estimate of a parameter theta that's in a model M and based on data Y. In order to do that, the Bayesian approach is to describe the density of theta given y by applying Bayes' rule to that density. So the density of theta given y is equal to the density of y given theta times the density of theta divided by the density of y. And just to reiterate, some of these densities may be mass functions if the parameters or the data are discrete. The terminology that we use to describe the components in this equation is that the density for theta, the p theta, is the prior density for the parameter. We often refer to this as the prior. p theta given y is the posterior density for the parameter, typically referred to simply as the posterior. p y given theta, I like to call the statistical model. Others might call this the likelihood. p, y given, p of y is the prior predictive density often referred to as the marginal likelihood. So this is the goal of parameter estimation, is to find the posterior given the model and the, and the prior. I should comment now that often the marginal likelihood or the prior predictive density can be written in another form to make it clear where the name prior predictive density comes from. So the new, the denominator here, p of y, is equal to the integral of the model times the prior when we integrate out the parameter. So notice here that we're integrating over the prior. Thus, this is the prior predictive density for our data y. The next goal that we're going to talk about for statistical inference is prediction. So Bayesian prediction is based off of the 
here y tilde is going to be our future data, this is the unknown, given the data that we observed, y. In this case, we take the integral of the future data, given the parameters, times the density for the parameters given the data, and integrate out those parameters. Here, there's nothing new compared to the slide that we had on the, the previous slide. Here, p theta given y is the posterior, and y tilde given theta is just the model. All right, the third inferential question of interest is hypothesis testing. In the Bayesian framework, we all often call this model selection. All right, so we're going to consider that we have capital K hypotheses, or models, that we're testing. And we're going to, we're going to denote them by M sub 1, M sub 2, up to M sub capital K. Bayesian model selection is based off of the posterior model probability m sub k given y. And we simply apply Bayes' rule to this equation so that we get the density of y given mk times the prior density of m sub k over the marginal likelihood for y. And again, we can expand this marginal likelihood calculation if we so desire. So just to reiterate the uh, terminology that's introduced here, P m sub k is the prior model probability. This will be an actual number between 0 and 1. P m sub k given y is now the posterior model probability, again a number between 0 and 1, that tells us how to update our prior model probability, that is an update from our prior to our posterior for the model probability. P y given m sub k is the prior predicted density under model m k. And as we did on the previous slide, we can expand this to include our parameter theta. So the prior predicted density here is the integral of the statistical model, y given theta, times the prior for the parameter under model m k, integrating out our parameters in that model theta. The last terminology I want to introduce at this point is the Bayes factor. So Bayes factor is the ratio of these prior predicted densities for model I versus model J. And we call it the Bayes factor comparing model I to model J. All right, so we've discussed sort of the basic framework of a number of inferential approaches uh, from a Bayesian perspective. And I want to take one last slide here to talk about uh, some advantages and disadvantages to the Bayesian approach. And I'm just going to introduce two advantages and two disadvantages, just to keep it simple. So two uh, advantages. The first one is that there's a coherent statistical approach to doing Bayesian statistics. And that was really the main purpose of today's mini-lecture, was to get that across. Essentially, you just do probability of A given B, where A is what's unknown and B is what's known. And so every problem that you approach as a Bayesian, you approach using that same framework. The second advantage that we did not discuss yet today is that uh, from a scientific perspective, I find that the interpretation of a Bayesian analysis is very straightforward. Two disadvantages. Uh, one is clearly that we need to specify priors. Um, this is typically priors for parameters, conditional on the model that we're interested in, and then also, if we're doing model selection, priors on the models themselves. And finally, the, there are very few problems that can be solved in an analytically tractable form from a Bayesian perspective, and therefore the approaches that we'll talk about later in the course, uh, you'll see quickly become computationally burdensome. Not, they still can be done, but there is some time and computation involved. Thank you.